Good afternoon. Um, this is my first year at the Waste Conference, and I think it's a bit of an exciting year to be here. There's a lot of shift, there's a lot of enthusiasm with everyone, so um, bear with me while we move back to MWU. <laughs> So, uh, in late October 2018, the New South Wales State Government revoked with immediate effect the uh, statutory exemptions permitting the application of mixed waste organic output material to land. Uh, this afternoon, I will explain why MWU is important, especially in the context of the EPA's waste recovery strategy targets uh, and New South Wales circular economy policy statement. Then look at how the processing and use of MWU was regulated prior to re revocation, um, implications for the industry, and what next now that the exemption has been revoked. So, and thank you to uh, Violia for the beautiful diagram. Uh, so as you probably know, mixed waste organic output or material known as MWU is a soil amendment which is made predominantly from organic material uh, from household general waste and is produced at AWT facilities. Uh, it differs from source separated uh, organics such as FOGO, which is curbside food and organics collection, um, in that it doesn't require uh, the consumer to separate it at the source. Um, and as a consequence, MWU comes with much higher rates of contamination. So processing of MWU uh, typically involves two stages. So firstly, the waste received is mechanically sorted and separated to ensure that the biodegradable portion is concentrated um, and waste, larger waste items such as plastic, uh, metal and other large items are removed um, and then the waste is pasteurised and biologically stabilised. So once treated, the MWU was then provided for use on agricultural land, mine site rehabilitation and plantation forests. So why is it important? So the amount of waste in New South Wales has been increasing rapidly over the last 30 years. Uh, it's partly been due to uh, population growth, um, but also partly due to changes in consumer, in consumer <coughs> patterns, so uh, consuming more highly packaged goods. Um, and by 2021, it's expected that New South Wales will need to process around 20 million tonnes of waste. The New South Wales EPA has set waste avoidance targets in, in the New South Wales Waste and Resource Recovery Strategy. And this strategy provides a clear framework for the waste management and provides an opportunity for the New South Wales to increase recycling across all waste streams. The strategy also aligns closely with the priorities set out in the New South Wales Circular Economy Statement of uh, October 2018. Um, the processing and application of uh, MWU to land diverts waste from landfill and assists New South Wales to meet its waste avoidance targets set out in its strategy. Um, and in all states and territories, uh, except the Northern Territory, more than 90% of households have a curbside, uh, curbside garbage service. Um, and in New South Wales between 2016 and 2017, approximately 25% of garbage bin waste that was collected was diverted from landfill and sent to an AWT facility for processing. Um, local and regional government organisations that manage curbside collection contracts have held a really important role in establishing this waste infrastructure. Um, and these organisations were often parties to large scale and long term contracts, which effect effectively um, acted to underwrite the security of the AWT infrastructure investment. Um, and the treatment of this waste was financially competitive with landfill due to a combination of factors, um, including the shortage of the local landfill capacity um, and the waste levy. Um, adding further, further pressure on our waste industry, in early 2018, China began enforcing its national sword policy. Um, it's already been discussed at, at length at this conference, so I'm not going to go into any detail there, but it has had a, a huge impact on the industry. Um, and in March, a $47 million package was announced by the, uh, for the local government and industry in response to this policy. So New South Wales has uh, comprehensive legislation which governs waste management. Um, effectively, the starting point for waste in New South Wales is 
unless uh, specifically exempted or excluded, everything is waste. Uh, all disposal of waste to land is pollution and thus prohibited. If you intend to apply waste to land in New South Wales, you either need uh, to be permitted under the P POEO Act, the waste regulation, or hold an environment protection licence. Um, clause, clause 92 of the waste regulation authorises the EPA to exempt certain forms of resource recovery uh, from, from waste, uh, waste li licensing requirements and the requirement to pay the waste levy. Uh, these exemptions took the form of the resource recovery orders um, and the resource recovery exemptions. So prior to October 2018, uh, the generation of EMRU uh, and its application to land was the subject of these orders and exemptions, which were both in general form and in, um, in terms that were specific to uh, certain operators. So resource recovery orders um, for EMWU included uh, material specification, processing requirements, record keeping and reporting requirements. Um, EMWU was not allowed to be supplied and applied to land if a uh, sample collected exceeded maximum concentrations of specified chemicals or other undesired um, attributes. Resource recovery exemptions, on the other hand, prescribed responsibilities for the consumer at the land application site. Um, and exempted the consumer from certain regulatory requirements, such as the need to hold an environmental protection licence or the requirement to pay the waste levy. Um, an exemption is given effect by an order which is made by the EPA and published uh, in a gazette, and may take effect from either the date that the order is published in the gazette or a later date specified. Um, as you may have noticed, an order made under this mechanism is uh, just as easily revoked by a further order made and published in the Gazette. As a point of comparison, I also considered one of Western Australia's resource recovery facilities, or RRF, in Nirabup. Nirabup processes around uh, 100,000 tonnes of mixed waste each year and converts approximately 70% of this recovered material into compost, or MRU. The facility pro, uh, produces around 40,000 tonnes of MWU annually, which can then be used in agriculture and mining to replenish degraded soils. So in Western Australia, in order to obtain approval for such a facility under the Environment Pro Protection Act in WA, um, the EPA must firstly report, on, uh, report to the Minister for the Environment um, and note what environmental factors are relevant to the proposal and the conditions and procedures, if any, to which the proposal should be subject. Um, in the EPA report for the facility in Nirabup, the EPA notes that the Regional Council actually commits to monitor the compost quality uh, to ensure that the compost is appropriate for its end use and that it would direct any contaminated compost, compost to landfill. Um, the standard of compost produced at this facility directly affects the market that the MWU can be directed to. Um, for example, fulfilment of a certain grade means that the MWU can have unrestricted um, use except for application to home, la home lawns and gardens. Um, the EPA and WA relies significantly on the industry to self-regulate, um, but is also empowered to audit the compliance of the, of the proponent uh, with conditions of approval of the facility. Um, this facility in particular holds a licence under the WA EPA Act um, and imposes conditions which relate to monitoring and reporting on environmental factors. Um, once the compost is screened, the MWU produced can then be onsol onsold as a soil enhancing agent, uh, which is suitable for blending and improving soil quality. So, back to New South Wales. Um, the EPA commissioned a, uh, some independent research and a technical advisory report in relation to processing and application of MWU to land. Uh, the report provided to the EPA in late May 2018 concluded that not only are there limited agri uh, agricultural or soil benefits from the application of MWU at the regulated rate, but also that the application of MWU carried potential environmental risks. Um, the environmental risks weren't outlined, outlined in the report and the findings of the EPA's 
uh, internal research haven't been published, but yet coming soon maybe. <laughs> Um, in October 2018, the EPA revoked uh, the resource recovery exemption order and announced that EMWU was not suitable to be applied to agricultural land and ceased its use on plantation forests and mining rehabilitation land until further controls could be considered. The revocation was implemented with 24 hours notice and with minimal industry consultation. Um, the effect of this revocation was to render the production of MWU obsolete and the application of MWU to land unlawful. Um, some of the key players in the industry, including the Waste Management Association of Australia and the Australian Organics Recycling Industry Association, uh, caused a joint letter to be sent to the former Environment Minister, Gabriel Upton, uh, expressing their disappointment to the decision um, the letter notes that the revocation sends the message that despite tens of millions of dollars invested in planning and development of the infrastructure, the government can wipe out an entire industry with no consultation or further explanation at the stroke of a pen. These associations are collectively seeking clarification on a number of areas, uh, including the grants, refunds and exemptions available to the industry. Um, and the industry is also seeking clarification on uh, how the loss of the landfill levy, uh, gate fees, loss of income and carbon credit losses will be compensated. Uh, the EPA's revocation of the MWU exemption will now require many local councils to landfill waste which was previously diverted from landfill and processed at AWT facilities. Um, for example, a uh, local example, Nambuka, Balingan and Harbour City Shire councils uh, collectively landfill approximately 12,000 tonnes per annum of mixed waste compost. Um, these, these councils have held contracts which have been in place since 2004 and are binding until 2027 and involved, uh, uh, involve a, the mixed waste processing uh, plant in Coffs Harbour to develop the MWU and this was then supplied to the local farms in the area. Um, the councils will now be subject to, uh, sorry, will now be subject to greater annual expenses for their waste disposal, and household waste will now be diverted to landfill um, and subject to the waste levy. The funding provided to the councils by the New South Wales government for the purpose of waste disposal is now unlikely to cover the costs to dispose of their waste, um, and this cost is now likely to be passed on to the ratepayers. Um, Michael Coulter, the gen general manager of Nambuka Shire Council, commented on the effect of the revocation on their long-term long contract with the waste processing plant in Coffs Harbour. Um, and he said the significant reason that the council entered into uh, a mixed waste processing was because it was recommended by the EPA as best practice. Um, and he says that the councils now have multi-dollar contractual commitments. Um, in an attempt to manage the impact from these changes, the EPA has implemented a support package. Uh, this includes a 12-month exemption from the, from the waste levy um, for the outputs from the AWT facilities. Um, in addition to targeted funding to cover the cost of sending these outputs uh, to landfill in the short term. Um, the waste industry has also indicated that this won't be sufficient to offset the costs that they will be subjected to in light of the revocation. Uh, the difficulty in regulating the application of MWU by way of an order or an exemption published in the Gazette is that it is removed from parliamentary oversight uh, and means that it's usually as easy to revoke as it was to implement. Uh, furthermore, the EPA was criticised in their transparency and consultation, as has been raised earlier, uh, in relation to the revocation, particularly as they relied on these reports which haven't been made publicly available. Um, the waste industry could potentially be benefited if the processing and application of MWU was regulated by legislation, as it adds, a, uh, adds an extra layer of certainty and accountability. Um, and this legislation goes through a lengthy process, which is why it takes so long to be implemented. Um, it's created when a proposed law is introduced in a bill, discussed in Parliament. Uh, if it's passed, it's sent to the Governor for assent, and at which time it becomes an act. 
uh, once an act is formally enacted, it can usually only be repealed or amended by another one. And that's, that would pre prevent the swift action uh, that had occurred in this case. Um, it's more likely that under the mechanism of legislation uh, that decisions such as the one that was made by the EPA in this case uh, would be more properly considered and justified in a transparent manner before being made. Okay. Um, as has been reiterated over the past two days, uh, some serious consideration needs to be taken as to whether we can take a national approach to the regulation of the AWT industry. Uh, a national framework would allow industry certainty and concrete checks and balances to ensure that the outputs from AWT facilities are suitable for application to land. Uh, the federal government should probably pay, play a bit more of an active role by leading and funding national support programs and setting uh, standards applicable Australia-wide. Um, a risk management approach ought to be taken to ensure the protection of the environment and supporting the AWT industry to divert these, uh, this, this, land, uh, this waste from landfill. Um, in an article published on the EPA's website in December in 2018, <coughs> EPA notes that the, um, the use of MWU on agricultural land is unlikely to present any health risk to the general public. Uh, in light of this, the overly cautious approach taken by the EPA uh, doesn't give weight to the potential for the processing and application of MWU to take the pressure off, the, off New South Wales landfills. Um, the current landscape for the industry in light of the revocation is very uncertain um, and it's unclear as to whether the EPA will approve any form of MWU for application to specific types of land. Uh, the EPA, as it's been alluded to earlier today, suggests uh, the possibility that MWU will be allowed to be applied to forestry and mining land once further controls have been considered, uh, but there's still considerable uncertainty about this possibility at this stage. Um, consideration should also be had as to whether the AWT infrastructure can be repurposed to process FOGO. Um, as FOGO is separated at the source, it's a purer waste stream and doesn't carry the same contamination risks as MWU. Uh, AWT facilities may be able to be altered to process FOGO uh, to a standard that is suitable to application to land um, and, and may avoid the need to divert it to, to landfill. Uh, facilities would need to take into account the costs of converting their facilities um, and the potential higher processing costs involved. Um, finally, in February this year, former Minister Gabrielle Upton wrote to the Australian Council of Recycling, reaffirming the New South Wales government's support for the continuation of the AWT industry following the recent change. Um, Ms Upton notes that a second phase of the support package um, as Cathy was talking about earlier today, uh, it's under development and that the New South Wales government's considering wider industry structural support, for example, grants to the AWC f a AWT facility upgrades. Um, in light of the recent departmental changes, it'll be interesting to see whether changes to the minister and the EPA will result in a, a shift of policy position from the government. Uh, we will continue to watch this space for the outcome of EPA's further investigations and New South Wales waste management. Thank you.